And welcome to Lift FM 98.5, 103.3 FM, and 97.9 on your FM radio dial. Of course, our original broadcast is always heard as it happens at liftfm.com. But the tool that everyone seems to really enjoy is our own Advantage Radio Ministries website. That's www.advantageradioministries.org. That's advantageradioministries.org. Click on Second Chances, and then if you hear our guest tonight, Larkin Spivey, and you say, wow, that was a great interview, and I want to hear it again, or I caught it in the middle, go to Second Chances at AdvantageRadioMinistries.org, and you can listen to it anytime you'd like and choose from. I think currently we're, we're into 150-plus interviews of people from all walks of life, some from the military like uh, Larkin, others from... Iran and Iraq and different ones that have been through things and just wonderful program that uh, if you're listening tonight for the first time we know that the Lord has sent you to here to be blessed and we have a wonderful guest with us tonight uh, Lieutenant Colonel retired Larkin Spivey and he is the author of the book Battlefields and Blessings Stories of Faith and Courage and uh, Larkin we'd like to say good evening and welcome to Second Chances. Good evening Greg it's great to be here this evening. Now, uh, we were talking as I, I reached out to you to get set up for the interview, and you tell me you're from South Carolina. Yes, uh, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Uh, it's a great place to live. It's, uh, I've been down, down that way to uh, visit and to drive through and different things, and I've always enjoyed my time down south. And the thing that I always love the most about uh, going down south, the people, Larkin, so friendly down there and you know, I don't have anything against uh, New Jersey where I live, but there just seems to be such a warmness from the people down south that I just am not used to up here in the north. I love it. Well, I appreciate that. We take great pride in southern hospitality and uh, hope it hope it's alive and well. It sure is. Now, let's let's so we can get into the interview here, just so we understand who you are. Uh, give us a little bit of background of where you're from. You know, the type of home you came from, a Christian home, things like that, and, and, and just a little bit of background so we can kind of get a basis for who you are. Okay, Greg. I, uh, I'm i from a small town in South Carolina. I grew up in the Presbyterian Church, went off to college at a military college, the Citadel, in Charleston, South Carolina. And by the time I graduated, I was pretty uh, disabused of my faith, uh, thanks to uh, college professors that uh, made it their point to broadened the horizons of uh, young undergraduates. And uh, uh, after the Citadel, I went into the Marine Corps and uh, actually drifted further and further away from uh, Christianity and considered myself to be a very confirmed skeptical person about all religious uh, matters and uh, tried to do it on my own. And, uh, you know, I pretty much did during my Marine Corps career. I went to Vietnam in 1967, 66 and 7 for the first time, and uh, uh, sadly I was a, a religious skeptic at that time, and you know, I prayed a few times when it, when I was under, uh, you know, in a lot of danger, but afterwards, unfortunately, I didn't uh, think too much about it. I never thanked God for anything that uh, he did to help me survive there. And went on after that for many years and uh, along the same line. And uh, uh, much later in my life that, you know, my life changed. Now, I don't know a lot about the military, but one of the things that I was looking at your uh, history and your overview on my sheet here says you were trained in things like parachutes and submarines. And when you hear the word submarines, you think of a place where there's a lot of time to think and a lot of alone time um in the military obviously you were in a combat situation but i imagine like you said there was times because of situations you were in you reached out to the lord but did some of the some of the times that you just stopped and thought did you ever wonder why i drifted from the way i was raised uh from the time i got to college to the service did you ever stop and think lord why did you let me drift that thought ever crossed well, your mind? Well, Greg, I, I consider myself, you know, even when I was a religious skeptic, I was a seeker. I've, I've always been interested in trying to understand uh, 
what things are about, what life is about, what the purpose of it is, the meaning of it. And um, I just sought all my answers in the wrong place, uh, even in the Marine Corps. I, I was interested in uh, philosophy and uh, psychology and uh, even uh, going into anthropology and the origin of the species and these kind of things and searching for answers on, a, on an intellectual plane. And the thing about the Marine Corps is, I mean, it is the greatest military organization in the world. And uh, for someone who is uh, spiritually handicapped, <laughs> it fulfills all the needs you have for a higher purpose and meaning in life. And it's sort of camouflaged for many years uh, those needs. And I just was able to find all my meaning and purpose and uh, all everything I considered important in life and, and being a, a good Marine Corps officer. And I don't, I'm not saying anything against the Marine Corps. I mean, there are a lot of very strong Christians in the Marine Corps, and it's, it's not contradictory. But for someone at that time, like myself, it, uh, the, those strong Marine Corps values kind of took the place of of spirituality. Now, obviously, you were in Vietnam, and that was a, a conflict that um, kind of paved the way for the way we view veterans, you know, such as those that return home today from Afghanistan and Iraq. Um, what happened uh, to change the way we view veterans, the way we used to and the way we view them today? What, what do you think changed that? Well, Greg, I think uh, the Vietnam veterans became the conscience of America on that score. Uh, we came back from Vietnam, and for some reason, we suffered the the slings and arrows of the anti-war movement. It was not just a anti-war; it was anti-soldier and anti-marine, and uh, it was not pretty. And I think in the years since then, the the, the, the Vietnam veterans have made sure that our soldiers are honored in every possible way. I mean, we can have political debates and discuss the, the purpose of the war and whether we should be there or not, but I think we've pretty well established the fact that whatever happens, we honor the soldiers, the sailors, the airmen who do the fighting. And I, and I think that's the difference we see today, and I'm thankful for it. Now, obviously, your time in the military eventually uh, ran out, and you obviously rose to the, to, uh, through the ranks, becoming a lieutenant uh, colonel. Um, what happened in your life, uh, Larkin, after you, uh, you know, came back from Vietnam? Well, I came back from Vietnam, and I completed my Marine Corps career. I did 20 years in the Marine Corps. Uh, when I was retired from the Marine Corps. I went into civilian life in the business world. And I think it's a perfectly honorable thing to do to, to go into business and to support your family and provide a service. I have no problem with that. But, but something was lacking. You know, I talked about a higher purpose and, and meaning in your life, and, and somehow the profit motive was not it for me. And... Uh, over the years, I realized that I had a void in my life, and I finally figured out that it was a spiritual void. And on a day in 1993, I was blessed to hear a, a talk uh, by a man named Charles Duke, a former astronaut. Uh, I went to a, uh, uh, a gathering of men breakfast in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and I didn't really know where what I was getting into. I might not have gone if somebody had told me that I was going to hear a Christian witness. Somehow I'd managed to go to church off and on uh, in my early life and, and, and frequently during my later life, and I had never heard a Christian witness. But Charlie Duke talked about, well, first of all, he talked about going to the moon, and he was very... Uh, you know, had a lot of humorous things in his story. He talked about trying to collect a mileage allowance when he got back and was rebuffed by the dispersing officer. And uh, he, he had a lot of humorous things to talk about. And, and then he got 
serious, and he started talking about Jesus Christ. And he said, uh, men, uh, you know, Jesus Christ was obviously the most important person in history, affecting millions of people and civilizations and nations, our literature, our art. And, and this person demands an opinion on your part. And you can go through life and you can gather information about Jesus and form your opinion, but you can't keep doing it forever. At some point, you have to make a decision about him. Either he was who he said he was, the, the Son of Man sent to restore mankind to God, or he was the biggest fraud in history. And that's the choice you have. And, and somehow, you know, God touched me that day. I take no credit for making that decision, but he touched me, and I made that decision and asked Jesus Christ to come into my heart. As, as Charlie Duke prayed, he said, pray along with me, and I did. And my life changed at that moment. And it's, uh, I've been on a new and different and wonderful path ever since, understanding finally the, the true meaning of life and purpose in life, and my purpose in life. When you that's, that's my story. <laughs> when when you when you made that prayer and decided to live for Jesus, what was the first change that you noticed in your life? Well, I, I didn't have any thunder and lightning or anything, but but from that moment there were there were three things that changed in in me very specifically. First of all, I I was able to pray. I could sit I could sit down quietly and pray to God and felt like he was hearing me and that I was hearing him for the first time in my life. And for the first time in my life the Bible became more than than just a uh, a big book. I mean I would open the Bible and everything I read seemed like it was meant for me to read. And then the church changed from a building where I went occasionally to a body of people, like-minded people who supported me and who I felt like I should support. And these things uh, transformed me uh, almost at that moment when I, when I said that prayer, Greg. So you, you say the prayer, and you said 1993, is that correct? That's right. Okay. Yep. So we're here in, in 2011... And we have a book that you put out called Battlefields and Blessings, Stories of Faith and Courage from the Vietnam War. First of all, what led you to write the book, and when did you do it? Um, I have a great publisher in Chattanooga, Tennessee, AMG Publishers. And they approached me, uh, I guess, four years ago now to write a book a devotional on World War II. Uh, I had already written several uh, Christian books uh, of a military history flavor, and they had seen these and, and wanted me to write a book in a series that they had started on battlefields and blessings. And uh, I was very happy to do World War II. I, I mean, I have roots in that war. My father, uncles, uh, uh, lots of people... Men in my family uh, fought in that war, and my mother uh, stood uh, coast duty on a, on a tower in South Carolina. And anyway, I, I wrote the book on World War II. And uh, when I finished it, I asked them if uh, if anybody was going to do Vietnam, and they said, "Well, you know, I was going to do Vietnam." And so I I did, and it's. It's a pretty big mountain to climb for a writer to write a devotional with 365 stories. Uh, but it was a, an amazing journey for me to write both of those books. And, and I'm doing the thir my third one now on Korea. But, but Vietnam was the book that, you know, that was my war that I was in. And, and I had some things that I really wanted to bring out. Uh, you know, it's full of individual stories, and that's the main backbone of it, but I've also uh, put a lot of historical information in it with maps and charts and photos and 
and have tried to make several points about that war, mainly for veterans of the Vietnam War. I, I wanted them to know why we fought it, why it was important, and uh, also how we won it uh, on the ground. And uh, so I, I, I've had a real sense of mission in writing that book, and uh, well, I hope anybody will get a lot out of it, uh, seeing the power of faith in war, but I especially hope every Vietnam veteran will read it to uh, get a better grasp of what they did and why they did it. We're visiting with Larkin Spivey. He's a former lieutenant uh, colonel, retired from the uh, United States uh, Marine Corps. And we are discussing his book, Battlefields and Blessings, Stories of Faith and Courage from the Vietnam War. And Larkin, one of the things that um, you talk about in your book is the fact, uh, obviously this is before 1993, so you're at a place where you hadn't decided to serve Jesus, but... You say that after Vietnam, you had an uneasy standoff with God. What do you mean by uneasy standoff? Um, I've already sort of gone into that, Greg. I, I went to Vietnam as a religious skeptic, and, mm -hmm. and everything I saw in the war, I, I mean, I thought I was seeing a lot of random violence and a lot of random death, and it sort of drove me away from any concept of a of a loving God who could permit these sort of things to happen. And I'm not sure I fully reconciled all that uh, since becoming a Christian, but, uh, you know, I, I pretty firmly believe now that, you know, God doesn't protect us from bad things happening in this world. You know, we have hurricanes, we have earthquakes, we have wars, but he does promise to be with us and, and that's what I've tried to bring out in these stories in this book, uh, how God is with us when we turn to him in, in our trials. And if we, can, you know, if we can see men turning to God in wartime, then certainly uh, we should be inspired to, to do that in our family and our everyday lives. Now, in the book, you talk about that, uh, in your opinion, the Vietnam War was a war that the United States needed to fight. Do you feel the same way about the present conflicts in Iraq and Afghanistan? Yes, I, I think we're fighting wars. We have fought wars that uh, against people who have threatened our security as a nation. I, I know on 9-11, uh, as a military man, that was one of the dark days of my life, seeing our homeland attacked and just having to helplessly watch. And I, I think I can speak for most military people uh, in the conviction that we need to be fighting this war on their ground, not on ours. And that's what we're doing. And God bless the men and women that are stepping forward to do it. Just had a friend, uh, since been friend with me since uh, high school, who just returned from uh, almost a year ago, from Afghanistan, and he's actually uh, going to go back in probably March of, of 2012. So uh, certainly uh, um, a lot of men and women in his, his situation. Um, let's talk God about bless him and, and, and all the others. Absolutely. Now, there's something that you, you hear about at times, and then you don't hear about it, but it's really something that all of us who have never been in the military probably take for granted, and it's this disorder called post-traumatic stress disorder. How does it affect the lives of returning soldiers? Let's talk about that. Um, Greg, the, the problem with men is that uh, we tend to compartmentalize things, and particularly in uh, combat or any stressful situation where you have to continue to function, uh, Guys in particular, and I'm not saying that women are immune to this or that all guys do this, but it seems like most men tend to stuff things down into their subconscious and move on and keep dealing with whatever they have to do. And, you know, I experienced that myself in combat. You just don't have time to grieve or mourn or uh, process guilt or anger or anything else. You just have to keep going. And... Uh, problem with that is eventually these things uh, bubble back up to the surface 
And uh, I have a good friend who has worked with post-traumatic stress syndrome uh, for a career since uh, Vietnam, and uh, he tells me that it's kind of like alcoholism in the fact that the person that has the problem is the last person to figure it out. You know, his wife figure it out, figures it out, his children figure it out, his friends figure it out, but he goes on with uh, outbursts of anger or sullenness or depression or even abuse or whatever it is, sometimes even alcoholism itself. And, and these things go on, and, and he just doesn't understand it. And so uh, my friend encourages uh, anybody with, with, some, with any of these symptoms to seek uh, counseling. And that's what he does. And, and there are uh, Veterans Administration counselors that specialize in this to let guys talk it out. And, uh, of course, the, you know, the ultimate solution is Jesus Christ. And I've got countless stories in my book, uh, the one we've talked about on Vietnam, of, of men who have gone through the valley and of despair and discouragement and even turning against God, but eventually coming back and and bearing witness to the fact that only in Christ is there a, a complete cure to whatever feelings of anger, guilt, depression, or whatever else we associate with post-traumatic stress syndrome. And so it's a complicated issue, but um, the, the spiritual part of it, I think, is the key. We're visiting with Larkin Spivey. Uh, retired lieutenant uh, colonel in the United States Marine Corps. And we're discussing his book, Battlefields and Blessings, Stories of Faith and Courage from the Vietnam War. And another word that you refer to is entitled survivor guilt. Talk to us about that. Well, I think every, every man that comes back from combat wonders, you know, why me? You know, why did I make it through? when uh, good friends didn't. And uh, it's just something that we deal with. Uh, it's uh, something that is always there. You, you, you wonder, you, uh, you know, you pray that you're living a life that honors the, the lives that were lost and gives some meaning to the lives that were lost. But it, uh, you know, the men, uh, the, the friends, the, the troops that were that were in your command, especially under your command, uh, that didn't come home. Uh, you just never, uh, never forget that. Now, when you hear the word fear, you, you know that that's one of the tactics that are sometimes used in war. And it appears the word 350 times in the Bible, yet in the Bible it says God's command to not fear. Talk to us about that balancing fear and not to fear well you know fear is useful uh at times you know we need to take precautions in life and guard ourselves against uh injury and accidents and uh and when we get fearful it may that's a signal to us that it's time to do something and um, you know i'm all for doing everything you can to address your own fears but after you've done all that, there is a point where you do turn it over to God and do rely on the fact that He is in He is in control. And God gives us the higher context is the way I like to look at it. He you know, the eternal perspective. And when we when we have the eternal perspective in our lives, then our fears on this earth don't amount to that much. Uh, we know ultimately we're safe with him. And and I think that can give courage to, to any human being knowing that. When you think of failure, it's often a stepping stone to future success. How do you view Vietnam and the perceived failure in Southeast Asia? Um. I, as I mentioned, I'm right now writing another uh, devotional based on the Korean War, which is before Vietnam. 
And Korea kind of stands as a beacon to the world of freedom and democratic government and Christianity. There are more missionaries being sent out of South Korea now than any other country in the world other than the United States. And Korea is what should have happened in Vietnam. We should have left Vietnam victorious, which we did, uh, but we did not stand behind South Vietnam after we left. And uh, two years after we left, uh, after cutting off all aid, all support, all uh, monetary, uh, every kind of assistance, uh, South Vietnam fell to the North Vietnamese. And uh, the dark, you know, the Iron Curtain dropped over South Vietnam. And I, I think it was uh, not an outcome that had to happen. And uh, I think it was a sad outcome in contrast to, uh, you know, South Korea, which is uh, truly a beacon of, of light to Asia and the rest of the world today. We've been visiting with Larkin Spivey, Lieutenant uh, um, from the uh, United States Marine Corps, author of the book Battlefields and Blessings, Stories of Faith and Courage from the Vietnam War and Larkin. Uh, one of the most important things is obviously the folks that would like to obtain a copy of your book or learn more about you and, and things that you've done in, in future books. Is there a website that they can learn more about you, about uh, how to obtain a copy of this book or previous or future books? Yes, uh, LarkinSpivey.com, L-A-R-K-I-N-S-P-I-V-E-Y, LarkinSpivey.com. It has a... Uh, summary of all my books and uh, uh, links to, to purchase the books and also uh, just a general description of uh, what my speaking ministry is all about and, and, and what I'm all about. So I'd be uh, honored if uh, listeners would uh, take a look at that website and uh, get an idea of, of uh, what we're talking about. Well, we certainly will uh, include that on our website with a link to you and uh, your work under Christian Authors. Uh, Larkin, uh, very important that uh, there's many people out there that probably were at a place where you were in 1993 before you gave your life and heart to Jesus Christ. Uh, maybe you were overcome with fear or you know suffering or whatever the case may be, and they would like to ultimately get set free. Would you lead us in a word of prayer and give those people the opportunity to do that right now? Well, I'd be honored to, Greg. Lord, uh, thank you for another day. Thank you for all the blessings that you give us in this life, for our families, our children, our, our great nation we live in. Uh, we particularly ask your blessing this evening on our men and women in uniform, many of them in faraway places, uh, in danger. We ask that you be with them and uh, guard them, guide them in their uh, every step they take. And Lord, uh, for our listening audience tonight, uh, there may be someone out there who is thinking of searching for peace, uh, searching for answers uh, in, in this life, and we ask, Lord, that, that you use uh, the conversation that, that Greg and I have had uh, to touch their lives, to give them a way to look, a place to look. Uh, we ask you particularly to, to bless Greg, to bless this great radio station and his program, and continue to uh, help him reach out and, and touch uh, the, the people that need to hear this uh, wonderful message. And we pray now in, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Our guest tonight on Second Chances has been Larkin Spivey, retired lieutenant uh, colonel of the United States Marine Corps. And Larkin, one more time, if they'd like to obtain a copy of your current book, Battlefields and Blessings, Stories of Faith and Courage from the Vietnam War, that website one more time. LarkinSpivey.com And final thing I want to leave you with, uh, Larkin, it says in the Word, Seek and ye shall find. And I know you're a seeker. And Amen. 
If you want to seek the Lord, he's right there, correct? Amen. Yes, sir. Thank you for listening to Second Chances here at Lift FM 98.5, 103.3 FM, and 97.9 on your FM radio dial.